Welcome back, friends. In this chapter, get ready to be mesmerized as Lu Sheng takes on the training camp of Dongming Province. Here, he faces new challenges and meets students from all over the province. Some have skin as tough as iron, others possess the speed of lightning, and there's even a mentalist genius among them. Wait, join. If you've missed any previous chapters, the link is in the description below. Be sure to catch up. Alright folks, let's set our sights high today, our goal is 600 likes. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. There were about a dozen boys and girls, roughly the same age as Lu Sheng, lugging suitcases of various sizes. Each of them sported a brass badge on their left chests, indicating their status as first-level warriors. Lu Sheng couldn't help but feel a twinge of regret for leaving his own second-level warrior badge back at home, cherished by his mother Zheng Yufen. If he had it with him now, he could have flaunted it proudly. Whispers and sidelong glances followed Lu Sheng as he stood among the group. Is he from Baihe City? But didn't the others from Baihe City already enter? Why is he still here? Murmured one. I heard he got in through connections. Couldn't even pass the formal martial arts assessment? No wonder Baihe City always scores low in the province's college entrance exams, speculated another. Despite the chatter, Lu Sheng remained composed, knowing he could easily handle these youngsters with his current strength. When the middle-aged man in military uniform addressed him, there was a hint of something peculiar in his tone, but Lu Sheng followed the group obediently into the base. As they entered, the door slammed shut behind them, chains rattling as it locked from the outside. A sense of unease rippled through the students. The middle-aged man's voice pierced the silence, directing them to the opposite exit for the camp entrance examination. Confusion erupted among the students. Wasn't this just supposed to be an entry ceremony? Why an assessment now? Protested one before a sudden mechanical click interrupted him. The floor beneath them cracked open, and screams filled the air as they tumbled into a narrow passage below. Lu Sheng, however, had anticipated the trap from the moment he stepped into the room. With his mental power providing stability, he landed soundlessly on the ground. As they gathered themselves, they found themselves facing a closed passage with steel walls fifty centimeters thick. It was wide enough for four people to walk abreast, with unexpected figures hidden within the walls. The students from Qingyuan City exchanged uneasy glances, while Lu Sheng observed their reactions calmly from a corner, his mental power serving as his vigilant guide. Apparently, this is the so-called induction ceremony, remarked the students in Qingyuan City, his eyebrows displaying a strong sense of pride as he sneered. I thought it would be some special trick, but it turned out to be this? It's boring. Amidst murmurs of discontent, one voice rose above the rest, Lin Xiaoyu, did you know there was something fishy about this camp entrance ceremony? Damn it, they didn't even warn anyone, I just fell down, and now my butt hurts and is about to burst. With disdain evident in his gaze, Lin Xiaoyu glanced at the speaker and retorted, You don't even have the ability to adapt to changes, how dare you call yourself a formal warrior? Attempting to defuse the tension, a tall, sweet-looking girl stepped forward, Okay, stop arguing. We are all from the same city. We don't want any of our companions to be eliminated. We should quickly find a way to pass this assessment. Another suggested, Didn't the person who just let us in say that we have passed the test when we reach the exit? Let's go together as a group. Even if there are any subsequent tests, we will definitely pass. After all, we have ten first-level formal warriors. Suddenly, attention shifted to Lu Sheng, as somebody stated Lu Sheng should go first as he is not from our city. It's just right. I don't know what dangers there are ahead, so let him be a surprise, one proposed. Agreed. That's a good idea, another chimed in. Unperturbed, Lu Sheng stood up, a calm smile gracing his lips. Lin Xiaoyu, acknowledging his initiative, nodded, Boy from Baihe City, if you behave well later, we may consider giving you a hand in letting you follow us to get through. With calm confidence, Lu Sheng responded, Beasts always walk alone, but cattle and sheep only travel in groups. After Lu Sheng's statement, he proceeded into the passage, leaving the teenagers from Qingyuan City in a state of bewilderment. Among them, Lin Xiaoyu reacted swiftly, his face contorted with a mix of shame and rage. Damn, you dare insult me like that? Lin Xiaoyu lunged forward, aiming a punch at Lu Sheng's back. However, before he could make contact, the steel plates lining the passage began to retract, and black shadows emerged from the walls. Startled, Lin Xiaoyu retreated as the mechanized figures materialized, triggering a chain reaction throughout the passage. Within moments, the area was teeming with these imposing, nearly two-meter-tall machine puppets, casting an oppressive atmosphere. The teenagers from Qingyuan City, including Lin Xiaoyu, wore grim expressions as they recognized the threat before them. These are mechanism puppets, someone exclaimed, their voices tinged with dread. Each puppet, crafted from an unknown alloy, possessed formidable strength and resilience. As the teenagers processed the situation, Lin Xiaoyu seized the opportunity to belittle Lu Sheng's lack of familiarity with mechanism puppets, reveling in his impending misfortune. 
Meanwhile, the sweet-looking girl stifled a gasp, torn between warning Lu Sheng and avoiding drawing attention to herself. Ignoring the other's skepticism, Lu Sheng calmly advanced toward the mechanized adversaries, prompting a mixture of shock and skepticism among his peers. As the machines punched Lu Sheng, he stopped them with one hand without even moving an inch. The teenagers from Qing Yuan City displayed incredulous expressions. Lin Xiaoyu, arms crossed, straightened up in disbelief, wondering if he had seen it incorrectly. Just as Lin Xiaoyu and the others grappled with this astonishing sight, an even more remarkable event unfolded. The sound of mechanical squeezing and collision filled the air as the machine puppet's arms were steadily lifted by Lu Sheng's firm palms. Sparks erupted from the joints, accompanied by harsh noises, as the machine struggled against the unexpected force. Wide-eyed astonishment spread among the onlookers. A voice was heard in disbelief, this guy's strength surpasses that of a first-level machine puppet. Is he even human? Others echoed his shock, struggling to articulate their amazement. A sweet-looking girl covered her mouth with her hands, her eyes reflecting a mixture of shock and awe. As everyone observed, Lin Xiaoyu burst into laughter, shaking his head mockingly. I almost fell for it, he jeered. These are just first-level agency puppets. It makes sense, doesn't it? If there were genuine first-level puppets here, how would anyone manage to pass the assessment? With a dismissive gesture, Lin Xiaoyu began to move forward slowly, his demeanor oozing confidence. If you're still in doubt, then watch and learn how I clear this level. With a flick of his hair, Lin Xiaoyu accelerated suddenly, charging towards the machine puppets ahead with unwavering assurance. His movements were swift as an arrow, reaching the puppets in the blink of an eye hitting its head in just the next movement Lin Xiaoyu was sent flying backward, crashing into the wall with a resounding thud. Sliding down the wall. Damn. These aren't first-level mechanism puppets. There. Bloody second-level puppets, he exclaimed before losing consciousness, his head slumping to the side. The others watched in awe as events unfolding the event unable to articulate their astonishment. Lu Sheng's spiritual power penetrated into the mechanism puppet's body, but he lost interest quickly. With a swift motion, he tore its arm off its shoulder with a resounding crash. The power is nearly on par with a second-level warrior, he remarked, unimpressed by its strength but critical of its slow punching speed. The young man outside the passage, observing the shifting lights anxiously, finally reached the entrance. He spotted a slender, handsome figure amidst the wreckage, his arrival met with a mixture of excitement and confusion from Lu Sheng. Finally, you're here, Lu Sheng greeted, his tone tinged with eagerness. Bewildered, the young man's gaze flitted between the broken puppets and Lu Sheng, momentarily stunned by the scene before him. Sensing a sudden chill, he instinctively retreated as a figure leapt into the air before him. Before he could react, a rush of wind preceded a sudden leap by a young figure before him. In a spacious control room, Dong Quangshu diligently reviewed documents while seated at a table. Her dark blue officer's uniform accentuated her figure, exuding elegance even as she worked. Opposite her, a young man sipped coffee, admiring the scene before him with a sigh of contentment. Dong Quangshu, noticing his distraction, requested his assistance with the materials. The young man, evading responsibility, cited his temporary status as an assistant. Reluctantly, Dong Quangshu conceded, knowing his reputation for laziness. As she continued her task, the young man, growing bored, wandered around the room. He inquired about the quality of the talent training camp, to which Dong Quangshu responded with disappointment, citing only eight candidates meeting their standards. She presented three standout profiles, including Charlene, a promising young talent on the brink of greatness. Despite the young man's jests, Dong Quangshu recognized Charlene's potential and designated her for special attention. After sifting through the profiles, the young man's attention was captured by the first file below. Excitedly, he pointed out the exceptional qualities of the candidate, highlighting his striking resemblance and impressive combat prowess. However, Dong Quangshu reminded him of the reason why the candidate was initially selected and subsequently removed. With a knowing look, the young man acknowledged the issue of talent. Dong Quangshu elaborated on the limitations of power type, emphasizing their diminishing effectiveness as martial artists advanced in levels. Despite their early advantages, such talents ultimately paled in comparison to the superior blood values of higher-level warriors. Suddenly, the silence of the command room was shattered by a series of urgent alerts, jolting both Dong Quangshu and Qin Xiaojin into action. Frantically, Qin Xiaojin accessed Channel 12's data, only to be met with a horrifying discovery, over 80% of the machine puppets were severely damaged, with more than 15 of them on the brink of being rendered useless. In a rush, Dong Quangshu demanded to see the surveillance footage. As they observed the chaos unfolding on Channel 12, their shock was palpable. The once orderly passage was now a scene of devastation, with shattered machine puppets strewn about like discarded toys. Realizing the immense financial loss incurred by the damage, Dong Quangshu and Qin Xiaojin speculated on the unprecedented force responsible for such destruction. Concerned that a high-level warrior might be involved, they pondered the possibility of an intruder among the students. 
with mounting urgency, Dong Quangshu and Qin Shaojin abandoned their deliberations and hurried to investigate the situation in Channel 12, fearing the worst. Meanwhile at the assessment hall no. 7. With a violent force, the last machine puppet was thrown to the ground, its chest dented from the impact. Charlene, vigilant, watched as it struggled to its feet, relieved that it ceased its attacks after being knocked down. With this, she knew she had passed the camp entrance examination. Approaching the exit, Charlene paused, sensing a lurking presence behind her. Her intuition warned her of imminent danger, a formidable opponent, likely at least a level 3 warrior. Speculating that this hidden figure was not part of the assessment but rather the supervisor, Charlene opened the exit door and stepped out into the light. To her surprise, she found soldiers in blue uniforms gathered outside, their anxious gazes fixed on another small door nearby. As she observed, the door was pushed open from within, causing tension among the soldiers. Driven by curiosity, Charlene extended her mental power, only to be met with a chilling encounter, an encounter with a boy her age, his face smeared with dried blood. Feeling an intense heat and an unsettling coldness emanating from his eyes, Charlene instinctively recoiled, retreating back into the safety of the small door. As she leaned against the door, her heart racing, Charlene could only think of one thing, the boy she had just encountered was undeniably terrifying. As Dong Quangshu and Qin Shaojin reached Channel 12's door, they found themselves encircled by guards from the training camp. A middle-aged military officer approached Dong Quangshu, reporting quietly that several nearby surveillance cameras had been destroyed, leaving them unaware of the situation inside. Remaining composed, Dong Quangshu instructed for all student information entering Channel 12 to be provided, but then changed her mind abruptly, declining the offer. Confused, the officer complied nonetheless. Suddenly, a loud noise echoed from the exit door of Channel 12, causing tension among the guards. Anticipating trouble, they stood ready to intervene, awaiting orders from their superiors. Contrary to the tension around her, Dong Quangshu's demeanor seemed peculiar. With a focused gaze, she scrutinized the small door, her eyes glinting with an inscrutable intensity, as if attempting to peer through its confines. Just as everyone braced themselves, the small door creaked open, heralding an uncertain turn of events. Al-12 was slowly pushed open from the inside. In the darkness, a figure leaned out, revealing half of his body everyone's nerves tensed. But as they caught sight of the figure, they quickly relaxed. The person who emerged was a young man, just a half-grown child. He was handsome, with clear eyebrows and a clean appearance. Fortunately, the tension from earlier dissipated, with some even smiling self-deprecatingly at their initial nerves. However, their expressions soon froze. They witnessed something terrifying, their eyes widening in shock and fear. The boy emerged completely from the darkness, dragging something heavy behind him. With one hand, he casually dropped a body covered in dust and blood that he had pulled from the passage. The body fell to the ground, revealing the face of a young man who had fallen into a coma. A soldier recognized him and stammered, it's the missing Lieutenant Wang he was a third-level warrior responsible for supervising Channel 12. Now, this young martial arts expert was being dragged and thrown to the ground like a dead dog. Everyone stood stunned, their minds still reeling. Only Dong Quangshu's expression remained unchanged. Yet, she couldn't deny the shock she felt. Despite having used her mental power to scan the passage, witnessing the scene firsthand still shook her to the core. Even Chen Shaojin wore a stunned expression. Sensing the unease in the air, Lu Sheng remained silent for a moment before attempting to explain, he's too powerful. Although he was part of the assessment, he said quietly. A heavy silence enveloped the venue. Dong Quangshu used her psychic powers to gauge Lu Sheng's strength, but she found nothing special in Lu Sheng. After a moment, Dong Quangshu's voice broke the eerie stillness, student Lu Sheng from Baihe City, congratulations on passing this camp entrance examination. Lu Sheng was led by a soldier to rest in the camp. Though his expression remained calm, various emotions began to surge within him. He realized he might have misunderstood the nature of the assessment. The sudden appearance of the third-level warrior didn't seem to be part of it. As the soldier guided Sheng Lu to his dormitory, he mentioned it was time for dinner and led him to the cafeteria. The food surprised Lu Sheng, there were over 30 meat dishes, many of which he had never seen before. With unlimited refills, it was perfect for a big eater like him. Ordering a meal for five, Lu Sheng sat down to eat, astonishing those around him with his appetite. While enjoying his meal, a tall and beautiful girl approached Lu Sheng. She introduced herself as a fellow student participating in the training camp in Baihe City and asked if she could join him. Lu Sheng, recalling her identity, welcomed her. You are the... He paused, then affirmed, purple headband. The girl, named Yang Yuan, smiled and nodded. During the assessment at the Baihe Martial Arts Association, Yang Yuan, like Lu Sheng, was the youngest among all the assessors. They had exchanged looks a few times, leaving an impression on each other. After observing Lu Sheng eat for a while, Yang Yuan gathered her courage to speak. Sheng Lu. Do you know anything about this talent training camp? 
she began to explain to Lu Sheng that Baihe City hadn't sent any representatives for many years, as none of their representatives had been able to pass the assessment. They often had to leave midway due to insufficient points to sustain themselves in the assessment. However, Lu Sheng seemed uninterested in small talk, busy chewing down his food. It was only when he heard about points for sustenance that his interest peaked. Lu Sheng's eating speed slowed down as he became intrigued. It was pointed out that to use the camp's resources, one needed to spend points, training equipment, instructions, tonics, and cultivation methods, everything required points. Even the delicious food he was enjoying was exclusive military rations, obtained only through points. Until now, only three people in the training camp had earned these points, further capturing Lu Shang's interest. These three individuals had passed the assessment to earn points. Cao Yang, a rank two martial artist from Yongling City, possessed the gift of stone skin. Next was Meng Jinha, a rank two martial artist from Donggong City, specializing in speed. The third was Xia Lin, a psychic genius and the strongest in the camp, excelling in mental abilities. Lu Sheng noticed a girl with a cold demeanor walking into the cafeteria, holding a rice bowl. It's actually her? He thought, surprised. He remembered this girl well. When he emerged from the passage earlier, it was her who used her mental power to probe him. However, she seemed frightened by him and quickly retreated back into the passage. As if sensing Lu Sheng's gaze, the girl glanced his way. Upon seeing him, she paled visibly, swiftly turning and leaving without hesitation, walking briskly away. Do you know her? Asked someone nearby, noting Lu Sheng's reaction. It's common to know her. Many people do. Xia Lin from Baoding City, they continued. Though not a second-level warrior, she's a rare spiritual master, even rarer than talented warriors. She's probably the most talented and powerful person in this training camp. I've heard the top management is already paying attention to her. It is said that there is a fourth one, but I guess it is probably false. Yang Yuan continued chattering. In response, Lu Sheng replied casually, Why do you say the fourth one is fake? Yang Yuan smiled and explained, Because the fourth pass was too exaggerated. Some people said that the fourth passer was so powerful that he not only destroyed a bunch of secondary agency puppets but even beat up the examiner in the passage. It was like a man rampaging through the puppets, a demented maniac sending a poor examiner to the hospital. I don't believe that there is such a person. Yang Yuan thought to herself that everyone in the camp was talented, and even Lu Sheng was one among many. She further tried to console Lu Sheng by stating that he could catch up to them only if he trained harder. Unbeknownst to her, several people had already approached her side. Yang Yuan was a little confused, as it was evident that these people were not here for her. The leading officer addressed Lu Sheng, who had been silently accepting Yang Yuan's comfort, with a serious expression. Classmate Lu Sheng, right? Because you destroyed 18 secondary agency puppets in our base during the camp entrance examination, you also injured a lieutenant officer and left him unconscious in the hospital. Now we are going to ask you some routine questions. Please cooperate with us. The base officer's commanding voice resonated in the huge cafeteria, instantly silencing the previously noisy atmosphere. Almost all the training camp students who were eating froze in their tracks, their expressions frozen and bodies motionless. Some even kept their mouths wide open, food poised halfway to their mouths. It was as if time had come to a standstill, each one seemingly under a spell of paralysis. Among the students, Yang Yuan's expression was particularly exaggerated. She stood frozen in place, her face displaying a vacant look as if a myriad of thoughts raced through her mind. The revelation of Lu Sheng's actions, confirmed by the base officer, shattered her previous dismissals of rumors as nonsense. The realization that Lu Sheng, whom she had been comforting moments before, was the rumored individual left her utterly bewildered. She struggled to find words to describe her inner turmoil, feeling as if she were in a dream where nothing seemed real. Lu Sheng swiftly rose from his seat, glancing at the plates on the table before him. But I'm not full yet, can you let me pack another one? He requested. As Lu Sheng and the others departed from the cafeteria, the atmosphere of petrification that had gripped everyone dissipated. The once quiet cafeteria erupted into a frenzy of heated exclamations and discussions. Holy shit, the rumors are actually true. Someone really destroyed a dozen machine puppets and sent the assessment officer to the hospital. The fourth person in the rumors, Lu Sheng from Baihei City. With this, the chapter concludes. Don't miss out on the next installment. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel.